Hi, this is Doug with Database by Doug with a short video on the from uh, clause in SQL or structured query language. This is very beginner material. If you are even more of a beginner, you might want to go back and look at the select statement and the videos uh, for no table selects. In other words, selects without tables. So here is what is in the previous video where I'm actually just putting data into the statement, sending the statement to the database engine, and the database engine is taking the data that I've provided in the statement and sending it back to me in a tabular form. So um, that's useful, or I guess, I guess it's a feature that uh, you can use. However, uh, what if the data is already in a database already? How do we get at it and display it? So here is a statement. Uh, there's a products table in the Northwind database, and I am getting the product ID and product name columns out of that products table. And the important part here is the from statement. In the from statement, I list uh, an expression, and that expression is made up of tables. In this case, it's very simple. It's just the products table. Um, so it sets the source of the data, and the product ID field is in the context of the products table. The product name is in the context of the products table. So both of these fields exist in the products table, and if I don't, um, uh, I can't put a field in there that doesn't exist. So for instance, if I try to do something like this, notice that it's saying invalid column name. Well, it's not it's not really invalid. It's a valid column name. You could name a column nonsense field. What it's actually saying is that this field does not exist in the products table. In other words, it's looking in products because that's what I have in the from statement. It's looking in there for something called nonsense field. It can't find it. So notice that uh, IntelliSense underlines that it is red and I get that error, same error as if I hover over it. So what if you don't know what the columns are? Well, I could do a select asterisk from products. So normally in the select clause, what you specify are fields that you would like to see in the table you would like to see. So for instance, here I have created this table with my select statement, and it says product ID and product name. And um, so those columns are the columns in the products table. And secondly, it's all the columns in the column table, or I'm sorry, in the products table. So the asterisk is a wild card that means all columns. Uh, this is really important. It means all columns. It doesn't mean, it doesn't say anything about rows. Uh, it doesn't say anything about how, uh, you know, the rows are ordered. It really just means all columns. Select all columns from products. So let's type some new ones in here, and I'm going to just demonstrate how this comes about. So if I'm typing in something like this, and I start at the beginning and type it in, notice that IntelliSense is not helping me very much. Uh, it doesn't know where product ID is coming from, right? It, there's really no uh, suggestion. So if I hit tab or something like that, it doesn't do anything. Notice also that it has a uh, red underscore on it. So it doesn't recognize the product name or the product ID until I type in products. So if I'm doing one table select statements, it is kind of helpful to have that from statement in there first. So here's sometimes how I'll start is I'll just do the select star uh, or select asterisk and, and see it and make sure that it works. And then what I'll do is I'll start typing in what I'm interested in and notice that now I get IntelliSense because the from statement is there now. And if I say something like that, I can use IntelliSense and I can tab or click on it and it will finish um, typing it out for me. Now, remember how you can rename a column in select? So if I have a, if I use as, I can take the product ID column and rename it as ID or the product name, product name, and rename it as name. You can also do that with table names. So 
Here, what I've done is I've renamed, for the purpose of this select statement, the products table. Now it's called P. This is what we call a table alias, or an alias uh, for the table name. Um, in the professional world, I just, uh, you know, typically people will leave the as statement out for uh, tables. So notice that there's as here, and there isn't as there. You know, sometimes they leave as out in, in the other ones also, depending on the database engine. Um, but this is pretty common. I just wanted to point it out. Um, also, you know, in most cases, the square brackets are not necessary. Uh, the square brackets become necessary when I have something like a, um, a space in the name, and now I need some delimiter to indicate that that space is uh, not a delimiter between uh, terms. Uh, it's not syntactic, so it's part of the name. Space has part uh, is part of the name. So um, the other thing I would point out about this is that um, notice that name is actually a reserved word in SQL Server. So it's getting a strange color syntax highlighting. It's blue rather than black here. So um, and you don't, it's not always obvious what the reserved words are. So I like to use square brackets. It's my convention for uh, whenever I make up a name in a statement, I will put square brackets around it just as a cue that that's a made up name. It's not a name that exists as an object somewhere. Sometimes you have to alias a table. So if I wanted to, for instance, put the products table in there twice, then I would have to alias it um, just to uh, eliminate the ambiguity between which copy of the table I was working on. Now, aliasing tables also has uh, some implications to how you qualify uh, names. So, for instance here, I have the choice of being really, really specific or more specific about where this product ID field exists. Here I'm saying it exists in the products table. Um, not qualifying it works fine in this situation, but let's say that I had another table, maybe orders or something, and that orders table actually had a field called product ID also. So, um, or let me give uh, the more specific examples, example of supplier ID in this case, and notice I haven't joined this, this that's another video but notice it says hey that's ambiguous it's ambiguous because both the suppliers table and the products table have a field called supplier ID so if I want to be non-ambiguous I would have to fully qualify it and no note I can have mixed qualifications there so um, so you don't always need to qualify um, but, you know, when you write bigger queries, it will make a difference and you typically, as you're doing more uh, significant work, you're going to be qualifying all of your, your fields. So, um, sometimes you'll see something like this where um, they'll alias it and more likely you'll see it like this where they'll alias it and the purpose be behind aliasing it is to save some typing, right? And um, I think that's maybe counterproductive because it gets, if you've got six, eight, 12 tables, this alias becomes hard to mentally map in your head. Uh, like what does P represent? Products? Or does it, you know, if I've got a products table and a payments table and a production table and a person table and, you know, a whole bunch of things that start with P, P's not very mnemonic anymore. It doesn't help you remember what it, what it meant. So, um, so I tend to think as you scale that this is much clearer uh, when you've got 12 tables. You always use the name of the table, not an alias for it, and it just is easier to read. Of course, for me, code clarity trumps almost everything. I'll type more so my code is very readable to others, and of course that also includes me a month later when I can't remember what I, I wrote. Um, backing up a little bit, I would also say uh, that once you've renamed it, 
uh, it doesn't exist anymore. So for instance, notice, notice this right here. Let's say that I took this, uh, this P, so I've renamed in this, I've renamed, I've alias products, I've given it a new name called P. And what that means is that now, if I go back and use products, now it doesn't know what that is. If I don't use anything, it goes, oh, there's only one table in this query. Uh, product ID must be from the table called P. Um, there is no products table anymore. There is a new table called P that happens to be the products table. So um, in summary, from is to state the source table or tables. Uh, you can alias table names in the from statement, and sometimes you have to. If you've got more than one table in your from clause, you're going to be fully qualifying your names, uh, column names, using this format, table name dot column name. So thanks for watching.